Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Sander Lanch podcast. I'm Joe, and today we're talking about Words of Radiance, chapters 29 through 32, wherein Sadeus does some scheming with his wife, or as I like to call her, Lady Macbeth, during the Adolin duel. And they've got some good schemes coming up, it seems like. We've got Shallan and Kaladin kind of going back and forth between these two. Shallan's making some nice drawings, making the guys feel good about themselves. Tin kind of finally confronts her and is like, you need to make a decision here on, like, what you, what you're going you're gonna to do this con thing or not. And then uh, we have Kaladin going back with his new recruits that are going to go out and teach all the other men to be men instead of bridgemen, soldiers instead of bridgemen. And then the storm comes. Shallan bunkers down for the night and um, talks a little bit about what her con, in quotes, is going to be against Dalinar. And then we go back to Kaladin, who faces off with Dalinar and the rest against the Assassin in White. So very exciting chapters these week, this week. With me, as always, is Data, Jack, and Jamie. All right, we're all here and ready to talk, so let's get to it. Hold on to something. Sander Lynch is about to begin. So yeah, we had four chapters again this time, and you know it, it, it's funny to me that I think it was just an episode or two ago that we had the chapter Assassin, and maybe and, and we talked about oh man is this is is Seth coming back? No, that was that was the false start. Now we have Seth back. What did you guys think of these four chapters? Boy, were these some chapters? I mean, it it was. I, I think I'm really just running off the high of the last one because it was so exciting because stuff's actually happening. But just, you know, just as as Shallan's about to get to the Shattered Plains, just as Kaladin's like stuff's looking up, he's got some men like kind of excited about being a part of his group. And now now the assassin shows up. Right. The time has run out for Dalinar, supposedly. And so it's uh, it was exciting to, to read, I guess, as a as a whole section, just just based on that, because, I mean, the stuff with Shallan, you know, drawing, cool, whatever. That that relationship with Tin still seems like, you know, rickety because it's built on a foundation of lies. And so wasn't sure how that was going to go in general. But, man, what an exciting conclusion to the section to have Seth show up and try to kill Dalinar and our other our other heroes having to fight him off. Super, super cool moment. Very cinematic. I, I, you, you've mentioned several times where you thought like this is a really cinematic like thing i could see this in my head sometimes i agree with you and sometimes i don't this one i would definitely agree is like a super cinematic moment like the the dark hallway the the dead body like his arrival like them figuring out he's there like all of it was very very cool very good mental picture from uh from the chapters so excited to, to see what's going to happen next. We kind of ended on a cliffhanger. So it really is. It is one of those moments. You're right. And like, like Seth coming out of the darkness and he's got his glowy sword or whatever. It, it gives me like Darth Vader lighting up his lightsaber in the darkness and stepping forward sort of vibes. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, there's, I know, I know I'm enjoying a book. Cause like I get into, I can get into books. Like I, I'm not, I know some, some people think like, Oh, he's always picking it, picking stuff apart, but like I can enjoy and get into books for sure. And like that would, that chapter, like when I get into something and I like I'm anticipating what's going to happen, I start to get chills and like I got I got a little bit chilly on this one. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, man, this is so exciting. What's going to happen? He's there and stuff's cracking off like it's going to. So I was uh, I was I was excited. Not a, not afraid to admit it. I should go in the episode summary for this episode. Joe gets chilly. I get chilly. Not the good kind that is tasty, but the, <laughs> I mean, I guess these are also good chills yeah. but it's like the also, thrill i prefer it when it's cold as opposed to 105 outside but. oh yes yes i uh, prefer that as well it is currently in the upper 90s so uh, that's not as bad not as great. it's been some of the days this week, you're right so. we had a tiny cold front come in so we we got a little bit of a chill but we're still in the upper 90s so not great desperately googling this like what does that mean oh <laughs> yeah sorry fahrenheit celsius 
So yeah. Oh yeah, up nineties. Yeah, fuck that. We well, Dak. At one point this week, it was a hundred and eight Fahrenheit. Which that'd be forty point five five. Wait, no, that's hundred and five. Sorry. Yeah, one hundred and eight is forty two point two Celsius. Yeah. Uh, fuck that for a joke. <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, it was not great. It was not great. Mm. I, I was mm. like, should we take the kids outside? What's the temperature? And we looked and we're like, no, we shouldn't. <laughs> I think that like the record for that date was 108 Fahrenheit. So we matched the record. Hmm, nice. We had um like when we were kids, if we hit 40 degrees, so like that point it was 105 or whatever, we would be able to not go to school, which was nice. Wow. That is nice. That I is don't nice. think they do that anymore. No, I don't think so. And what did, what did, um, what did Sydney get to that year, Dak? It was like, it was, I think it was before COVID, like just before COVID, but it was like, it was so hot, our roads were melting. And I think it was like 50 degrees Celsius. God. Um, which was like a huge, just uh, so hot. And then it flooded like a week later. It was <laughs> just. Yeah. Uh, Sounds like Arizona. Yeah. Sounds like Arizona does that in Southern Arizona. Highest recorded maximum temperature in Sydney was 46.4 Celsius, which is 115 and a half Fahrenheit. Oh, I think it got higher than that. I mean, that's that's still messed up. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, it's still that's, horrifically hot. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes in Phoenix, Arizona, it like gets so hot that their like mailboxes start to melt, like the plas- <laughs> plasticky, rubbery mailboxes and stuff. Ooh, that's. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a reason that uh, we have way more AC in in the U.S. than they have in Europe, and probably uh, you're you guys, not wrong. I imagine in Australia, probably also. Yep. So like where we live, we don't get like. Oh, we do get pretty, like, extreme hot, but we're a little bit higher up in the mountains. So in the winter, we get a lot colder than the mm-hmm. other capital cities. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. like, sometimes it'll snow, but it doesn't, like, it It doesn't usually snow. It doesn't settle. But, like, an hour down the road, it's snowing and settling. But it, you've got to have your houses set up for both extremes because, yeah. I mean, you guys would be a little bit that way as well, I imagine. But it's just, you, you, there's no there's no happiness. Like, you can't be set up for <laughs> You have to have both. <laughs> It is nice, anyway, it's nice when it snows. The kids like to play and, you know, make snowmen and things. So. Yeah. We're all old, obviously. We're talking about the weather, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About, back to the book that we read. <laughs> yeah, I agree with Joe. It's like, this is very much a, uh, there are some cool chapters, cool chapters, and then you get to the last chapter and the rest are just driven from your mind because of how intense that one is. So exciting. I, I especially have been annoying the shit out of everyone, clamoring for when, but when Seth, when Seth. <laughs> so uh, no. here we are. We finally, we finally got him. And it was great. That section was phenomenal. The thing that grabbed me, you, the Darth Vader in Rogue One comparison is uh, probably pretty apt because we've seen Seth do his thing several times now, but this is the first time we've seen it from the perspective of the victims. And it is terrifying. Mm. Just being these guys who are just like, what the fuck? He's a guy out of legend. He's like, and he's just absolutely destroying everyone. Because like, you know, it was a th- it was a three on one fight, and granted, only one of those three had a shard blade. But even so, like Seth just tore through them, and Kaladin got a very lucky in in bailing him out at the end there. Yeah. Especially considering Kaladin's down an arm now. I know, right? How messed up is that? Speaking of Star Wars comparisons, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's true thought of that yeah yeah no like that's uh, yeah shit a lot happened in just in that very short section and I, I i i did have a moment when reading it just sort of this odd detached moment it's like man thank god seth showed up and proved Kaladin right because otherwise he would have been in so much shit if nothing happened <laughs> nothing at all happens and the king and dalinar are both like what the hell man yeah all right I you're fine <laughs> like, i had a gut feeling my gut was wrong it happens, you know. I mean, in a way, his gut feeling led them directly into the assassins, so... Uh, yeah, but, like, the assassin in white, you, you could reasonably assume, it's like, if he hadn't led us there, the assassin was going to come to us. Yeah, he probably would have kicked down the door and surprised everybody, and it wouldn't have been good. I'm here, bitches. <laughs> because that, Seth, that's Seth's calling Seth would card. say that. I'm here, bitches. Uh... <laughs> no, Seth, Seth would get all sazed on, and it's like, I am, unfortunately, here. Yeah, that's true. Yep, yep. I'm, I'm here, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that was obviously the highlight of this section. The other stuff was pretty cool. It was nice to finally get a bit of Sadius. He's out on the battlefield. I don't know what Amaram's game is. Like, he's, yeah, ostensibly he's on Dalinar's side and he's trying to work Sadius. And, like, Sadius and he have this, like, un, like not 
fully comfortable working relationship, but so I can't figure out what Amram's up to. I am fascinated by Sadius's wife because she seems like she seems really scary. Like this is what this is what Shan Ariel wishes she was. So yeah, like I'm I'm, I'm curious. I like their conversations of like the two villains plotting because like it seems like like they do seem to genuinely love each other in a evil way. So, so yeah, that was it was just really cool to see them going. I liked Sadius figuring out what Adolin was up to and it's like oh maybe look if only he wasn't such a petulant bastard he'd actually be really good. <laughs> I, I like that Sadius can show can like can acknowledge respect. I think that does set Sadius apart from some of the other villains we've had over the course of these books. He's he he's an awful person, but he's not an idiot and he's competent and he does give credit where it's due. So it's like. I can't hate him on like a Straff Venture level. So mm. yeah. As for the as for the other stuff, I'm like Shalan's stuff is like, this is all really interesting, but you're trying really hard to make me feel sorry for Gaz, and I'm not gonna do it, sorry. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. No. Nah. They are trying hard, it's true. Yeah. But yeah, like it, yeah, I, yeah, and then there's Tin. I so, I, I'm going to cling to my theory that this might be Liss, and even if it's not, she I, uh, I'll cling to the theory that she is the person who arranged Shalan's assassination. Not Shalan's, Jasnus. Fuck, I keep I keep mixing those names up. I mean, it was almost no. Shalan's assassination also, to be fair, but yeah. Yeah, but she wasn't the prime target. <laughs> not important enough to be the prime target, sadly. Yeah, yeah. and Cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But I, you make a good point about Sadius. He's, he's definitely... Especially because he he acknowledges Adolin is really good at this, and then he's like, "How can I use that?" Like, yeah, he, he's going to give credit, and then he's going to figure out how do I incorporate it into my scheme. And that's that's like a a level of agility, like I guess mental agility uh, or scheming agility that you're you're like, okay, this guy's going to go further than someone who's unable, who's just like, ah, that guy sucks, and I don't care how how well he does, he sucks. I'm not gonna, you know. Being able to recognize strengths in others and plan for it is going to get you a lot further than just ignoring what everyone else can do and pretending you're the greatest there ever was. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole thing about villains uh, in fiction. You know, you've got some villains who think that guy is so cool and you really like reading them. I don't think Sadius is on that level. I don't think he's cool. He's, he's not like a, oh, you know, like a Doctor Doom or a Sinestro sort of like, oh, yeah, mm. this guy's fucking awesome. I like I enjoy like just seeing him do his thing. It's like, I can't say he's quite on that level. But he's competent enough that I'm just like he's an interesting villain, I guess. So, yeah, I'll give you that. Like, it, it, it's definitely there's definitely something about competence that you're like, that's more entertaining to read or watch yeah. or whatever. The the bad guys who lose every week on the TV show are are not as interesting as the guys as when they can actually come up with a good plan and win, which is oh, but- why. Even then, like if they if they do cool stuff while doing it, like you know yeah, Batman the animated series, like all his villains like would lose week to week, and they were still like really cool bad guys. You know, mm. you got the Joker, you got Scarecrow, you got Two Face. Yeah, I don't think Sadius is quite on that level of just being cool, but he's still on the level of like, all right, he's smart, and that makes him dangerous, and that means that like, he's like, oh, what are you up to next? It's like you're interesting. Yep, interesting is a good one. He's not. He's not pleasant, not even really pleasant to read, but he's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But also that's that's why Megatron from Beast Wars is uh, a really great bad guy because uh, he won a it's lot. It's true. He does. Yeah. He does win a lot. Yeah. I felt like Beast Wars, you were always like getting set up for failure as a as a fan of the auto as, of the Autobot animal guys. It's just like, oh, Maximals. Yeah, yeah, the Maximals. You're just like, but Optimus Primal, why, why didn't you win? <laughs> Also, have you guys watched the new Batman show that dropped? No, no. I've heard it's good. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to watch it. Did I? Once uh, I haven't yet. I, I had serious issues. Yeah, there was one. It. Yeah, Batman: The Caped Crusader. It's uh. You got I, I had, I had serious issues with the first two episodes. Uh, they're not great, but it gets better after that. Yeah, I mean, look, is any show good on its first outing? Not usually. You know, Bruce, the new Bruce Tim animated thing. You gotta, gotta give it Bruce, a shot. Yeah, Bruce Tim, he's the man. Is Paul Dini working on it too, or no? I mean, he doesn't have to be working on it. it I'm yes, sure. it says that he, he he well, okay, I'm sorry. He's credited on three episodes as the creator of Harley Quinn. Oh right, uh, yes, yes, he did create her. So anytime they use her, he gets credit. Yeah. Man, that guy's cashing checks off that character now. <laughs> right? right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. 
we made this one-off bad guy for an episode of a cartoon. Yeah. And then moved, moved into comics and is now one of DC's inexplicably most popular characters. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, I think it's pretty explicable. Yeah. I mean, there, there, there are degrees. There are degrees to it. You're right. And we, we've tangented away yet again. Once hey, again. It's fine. That's what they come for. <laughs> Jamie, what did you think of these four? chat i almost said episodes hi uh, TV <laughs> i'm still here <laughs> yeah look i agree that last chapter was spectacular and i once i started chopping the viewpoints and i was like oh 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 something's gonna happen before we get to the end of this chapter and i got really excited <laughs> and it, it did not disappoint so that was that was awesome yeah look, the guys have summed that up honestly we'll, we'll talk about it more when we get there but fantastic very cinematic loved it can't wait to read what happens next with with all of them sadius yeah glad dak touched on that i was like i'm reading this guy going what i can't stand you you are horrific and then his wife sits down next to him and i'm like how can someone so awful seem to love his wife so much (laughs) like i don't understand oh wait she's terrible too okay (laughs) a little match made in evil heaven for these two so but yes she was very interesting and i i do like i i like the dynamic of them together and having you know these discussions about things that are just really that terrible but i do not trust amaram and i i actually reckon he's on amaram's side not dalinar's side we don't know who he's playing yet but we know what we know from from kaladin and unfortunately i feel like he's shown more of that color than Dalinar's perception of Amaram at this point. So, yeah, don't trust him at all. And honestly, like the Shalan stuff, I liked with her stopping to sketch and, and finding this little oasis just before they hit the, the Shattered Plains. And like I liked that. And then it was like, once we got to that last chapter, I was like, that is all from my mind. I don't <laughs> care about Shalan's story right now. This is way more exciting. I still hate Tin. Yeah, don't trust her. I don't trust anybody. <laughs> you don't really <laughs> prove yourself. You've got to prove yourself to me <laughs> in this book. Um, but, yeah, I don't know how she's going to play it. I also don't know how she's going to play it now. I was like, why are they taking so long to get to the Shadow Plane? Surely they're so close. Why aren't they getting there? Ah, uh, Because they need to not be there when this happens. I also have, like, so many questions that, you know, everyone's going off, uh, and I'm saying everyone, the god equivalent in the in the High Storm. What's his name? Oh, the Stormfather? Stormfather. Uh, I was like, hi, father. No, they're high princes. No. <laughs> uh, Stormfather. Uh, like, not trusting Kaladin. Like, that was kind of interesting. I don't really know what to make of that yet. But then still losing it and all this stuff's happening. And I was like, this doesn't appear to be the thing we've been working our way up towards. Like, we know that Seth was going to come for Dalinar at some point. But we're only, like, halfway through our, what, 60-day warning? So something is still coming, and obviously we're not at the end of the book, so something is still coming. This is a nice little spanner we've got thrown in the works here, but whatever whatever Seth is, there's a lot more to him than simply being uh, like having a spren and then being a radiant effectively, which we kind of talked about that in relation to the Parshendi last week or the week before. So, yeah, it'll be uh, – I'm keen to see how it unravels, but I'm also terrified of what's still to come. If this is the this is not the thing we've been worried about, we're worried about it on like a level. But this is not the thing that everyone else has been worried about. They obviously don't know that Seth is coming up to this point. Lots of questions. I have lots of questions. I think elokar has been worried about uh, this, but everyone else has. Other yeah, elokar has been kind of worried about anyone assassinating him. I don't think he's worried yeah. specifically about his father's assassin. Yeah, fair point. Where he is now, evidently. <laughs> um, <laughs> you should be now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I also like you calling out. It's like I don't trust Amaram, and I'm like, what? Well, if after the last book you did trust Amaram, then I would say there was something wrong with you. <laughs> I, agreed, agreed. No, definitely don't trust Amaram after what happened with with Kaladin. But having we, we haven't had really any one on one interaction with him in this book. We've kind of we we've, we've seen what sort of Dalinar thinks, and Kaladin shares his thoughts with Dalinar about what Amaram did and you're going, okay, well, you've got two very conflicting sides. And I feel like in these chapters, he's sort of all but confirmed. Like, yes, that is, you're right about me and you're the one person that I can actually speak to frankly about this stuff. Like, and, and what I think about what you're doing, 
I just feel like that's too strong a bond there to be like I, I don't think Amaram is having a sudden turn of conscience and being like, well, I'll play Sadius while I'm good buddies with my mate Dalinar over here. It just doesn't it, – Amaran's in it for himself and Dalinar is being played and that's not okay. Yeah. It, I mean, you, you mentioned we haven't had that many one-on-one interactions with Amaran. I guess, like, Sadius is the one that we've seen in this book. We didn't have yeah. all that many in the last book. We had a couple, like, and they were pretty, influ- like, influential on the whole. But, like, we mm. don't – honestly know that much about amaram no and, and, and we've got sort of got two from two now for opportunities for him to show his true colors mm. and two from two he's let us down or sort of lived up to exactly what kaladin thinks he's gonna do so yeah nah dal and i run run far away from this guy <laughs> uh yeah no i'm not gonna disagree with you obviously amaram mm. see your true colors that's why we hate you is, is this a song? Yeah, you never heard that song? It's like, uh, you see, I see your that. true colors. That's why that. I love you. But okay. I changed it to hate you. Much better. <sighs> Joe, uh, Joe, superior songwriter to Cindy Lauper is what. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, my mine's, my songs are not really fit for radio, but <laughs> some of us are artists, you know. Uh, On that, that note, was a, that was a that was a joke. I'm not an artist. <laughs> no, it's, it's, per, it's a perfect transition to chapter 29 because this is how the, the Cindy Lauper fans turn on that turn on our show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna get so much yeah. email from the Cindy Lauper yeah. fans out there. Sorry guys, I mean, boys just want to have fun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, he's uh, done it again! <laughs> oh man! Time after time, you do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. The epigraph on this first chapter is about art form. <laughs> so uh, we're all artists. Yeah. Data's, data, data's just like, uh, we need to get the fuck off this topic. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, we could go down the rabbit hole of, uh, you know, like playing with titles of every song under the the the, the sun, but let's not. Yeah. Uh, art form for colors beyond our ken, for its grand songs we yearn. Yeah, we grand track- songs. Yeah, exactly. We must nice. track creation spread. These songs suffice till we learn. So I guess for art form, you need creation spread, which we have seen Shalon attract several times. So maybe the uh, the the Parshendi need to make friends with Shalon. Oh, is that why that that one Parshendi dude was painting flowers? Yeah, I think I think that's exactly why he's trying to get some creation spread. This is from the listener song of Revision, which that sounds like a messed up song to me, but whatever. <laughs> And as Dak pointed out in the last episode that we recorded, this one begins with Toral Sadius closed his eyes. He's got he's got his sword Oathbringer, and he's on the field of battle. And Sadius and Amaram have gone out to capture a a gem heart in a battle with the Parshendi. And just as they're wrapping things up, the the high princes who were assigned to this chasm run or uh, plateau run, sorry, show up, and Amaram's like. You know that we messed up, right? And Sadie's like, what are you talking about? This went great. And he's like, no, I mean, we, we had to get out of here with the gem heart before the others arrived. And then you could just pretend that you didn't know it wasn't our turn. And Sadie's like, no, 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 no. You mistake me. You assume I still care about deniability. And he's got this plan, which I'm going to jump to it for a second. But he just walks up and, like, drops the gem heart in front of the other high princes. And he's like, there you go. I was bored. Thought I'd save you guys some trouble. <laughs> and takes off. I, I really think data should play if there's like a like an audio play of this of this book <laughs> data should play Sadius. i think he's got what it takes <laughs> i feel like i feel like at that point i did some like half southern accent for a second and i'm like in, in apparently in my version Sadius is matthew mcconaughey and yeah that's uh, that's <laughs> he's the way like, to go I, with it i suppose yeah, he's, he's like i got the gym heart for you all right all right all right <laughs> Oh, Matthew McConaughey is in uh, has has a cameo in Deadpool three. I still haven't seen that. Gonna have to go see it by myself, I guess. Hey, I'll I'll, I'll go with you. I I enjoyed it. I go see it again. Okay. Yeah. Also, uh, while while you're watching it, listen for Nathan Fillion, who has a cameo as well. Yeah. I mean, I Joseph didn't Gordon. Pick him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Joseph Gordon Levitt had a cameo in Knives Out, and people were like, he did. So <laughs> I I didn't notice it. I mean, that was literally background audio. Yeah. I mean, he, he had a cameo in uh, Glass Onion as well. He was like the the hourly chime on the island. 
that's that's funny. I didn't really? That. Yeah, like what? Like Edward Norton's like, oh yeah, that's just the hourly dong. You hear this thing go dong, and that's Joseph Gordon-Levitt. <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, oh, Glass Onion, the movie that inspired me to take a trip to Paris because they 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 destroyed the Mona Lisa, and I was like, no, I got to see the Mona Lisa. Oh, I was like, they went they went to a Greek island, didn't they? <laughs> Tax like did it was a, <laughs> yeah he was like tax like was I watching the right <laughs> <laughs> just I just imagine you like trying to remember back to when you saw that movie and be like what was, what was I doing yeah, I, can, <laughs> I can hardly even explain it but just after I walked out of that movie and like it it hurt me I was like I know that's not the real Mona Lisa it's a movie but geez that's just, that was messed up and I was like well now I have to go and see it I have to have seen it once in my I life need to make sure it's okay. Yeah, gotta go to the Louvre, fly yeah. across the ocean, and check on it. Uh, the Louvre was really, was a, a fun day though. Yeah, it was closed when we went to Paris. I was bummed about that. Oh, yeah. And then right across the street, I found a, a pirate making crepes, and uh, it was a great day. That does sound like a great day. <laughs> hey, Jack, we need to get to Europe more. Yeah. We tried. I know. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, and now you have a little child that makes it even uh, that much more difficult. Yeah. Yep. More difficult um, and more expensive. Yes, and that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so speaking of more expensive, it's uh, High Princess <laughs> Hatham and Royon that uh, he, like, remember, each of these gem hearts is worth, like, a fortune, and he just chucks it in front of them. He's like, hey, there you guys go. See you, see you around. And the, I can imagine, we don't really, I don't think, see them say anything, but I imagine they're just like, whoa, what the, what the hell just happened? And I, I guess technically, like we found out that all the gem, the the gem hearts become property of the crown was Dalinar's new thing, and it's like the wealth will be distributed as the crown feels is appropriate based on how helpful you were, or whatever. So they didn't actually do anything to get the gem heart this time. I wonder who's going to get the money. But we have the the conversation between Amaram and Sadius is more the focus of the chapter, where Amaram he's like, look, I'm duty bound to join you on the battlefield, but I don't approve of these actions. We should be seeking to bridge our differences with the king and Delinar, not agitate them further. And Sadie is like, don't give me that noble bullshit. It works with the others, but I know the ruthless bastard that you really are. And Amram doesn't, like, it says he sets his jaw, eyes forward. Like, he doesn't like that, but he doesn't debate it either. He's like, look, you're right about me. You and I have this understanding. You're the one guy I can speak the truth to here. But Alethkar needs to be strong for what is coming. And Sadie is like, yeah. I know that Al- Alethkar needs to be strong, which is why we're going to bump off like the the people in my way, and then I'll make it strong by force of fist and rule of blood. Yeah, that sounds like it'll be a great, jolly old time. He just seems really short-sighted. Like, I feel like the, the, the war and the battle that Sadius is trying to win is not the war and the battle that everyone else is trying to win. Mm-hmm. He's in it for, for glory and... Yes, we're gonna win this thing and get rid of the Pasheli. And like to an extent the others are as well, but I feel like he's just he's missing this piece of the bigger picture. And he's just on another on another level. And it helps us that uh, that we know, like Jamie was mentioning, the the time limit where the, t- the clock is ticking down to something bad. And we believe that because we believe in Dalinar and his visions or whatever. These guys don't have that even if they knew about it, they probably wouldn't believe it. So Yeah, true. It's not. It doesn't seem as urgent for them. And Amram's like, "Do you ever worry about like what we're what you do, what we have to do?" And Sadie's like, "Worry? Why should I? It gives the wretches a chance to die in battle for something worthwhile." And Amram's like, "You say things like that a lot. Uh, you weren't like that before. I've learned to accept the world as it is, Amram. That's something few people are willing to do." So apparently, Sadius wasn't as bad as he is now before. Um, you know, people get worse or better. Or they stay the same, I guess. And Amram is not comfortable with the, uh, you know, the things that he's saying and doing, but he also goes along with it. And so yeah, they they drop the the gem heart, they take off because Sadius wants to catch the duel today, just in case the youth embarrassed himself again after the ridiculous show that he made of winning those shards or that shard before by beating a guy. I, I still don't understand why. Anyone is like, oh, he's such an embarrassment. Like, he won. He got some shards that are super valuable. I don't understand what, what, yeah. why you're, like, looking down on it. I, I, I just don't get it. Like, I understand being prideful. Like, I get that. 
right? But this is like on the level of stupidity. It's like, okay, doesn't matter how he did it. He's getting the most valuable thing in your society. Literally, Mm -hmm. you traded like an enormous amount of slaves for that one for half of what he got in that last battle. So, like, what are you talking about? (laughs) Actually, I I think he made. Did he win? Did he win an armor, the armor and the sword in the last one? I don't even remember. Yeah, I don't remember. You, You might be right. That may have been the king's sword and he may have just won the armor. But either way, either way. No, maybe maybe he did win both because didn't he give Renner and the sword that he won? He's like, here you go. Yes, he gave Renner and the sword. That's the, that's where Renner and got the sword. That's yeah. right. Okay. Okay. It's been too long. <laughs> it's, it was in this very book and it's just like, yeah, that was a while ago. I don't know. And I, and I keep looking at the percentage and after this section, it's like 34%. I'm like, how do we still have two thirds of this book? Man, yeah, it's a, it's a book. So we cut to a few hours later, Sadie is settling in at the dueling arena. And I, it's it's totally random, but I love the note that he's like, he'd never tell anyone, not even ILI, but he secretly wished he could just go around in a uniform like Dalinar. Like, it's such a burden to have to dress nicely or, or like, fashionably, which, you know, fashion, it, it is a burden. I agree. I know I'm burdened by it. <laughs> there is a there is a certain peace, though, of knowing that you don't have to choose what you have to wear when you yep. get up wearing a uniform. It's like, what am I going to wear today? Oh, I know. The same thing I wear every day. Like, <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I agree. Burdened with glorious purpose. I don't know what that is. <laughs> glorious purpose. What are you going to wear tonight? Brain. Same thing we do <laughs> every day. Every day. Yep. Peaky. Mm. That, that is absolutely Nothing. also my thought. <laughs> yeah, we're mice. Exactly. We're mice. <laughs> we're wearing our fur. Don't be silly. <laughs> uh, and so he's sitting up here. And ILI, I I don't know how you would say her name. His wife shows up. And, Lady Macbeth, we know. Yeah, we Lady know Macbeth, there you go. Um, and we get this this note that her name is perfectly symmetrical, which is a tiny bit of blasphemy from her parents that they dared implied such holiness of their children. What a, I don't get that. Uh, I guess like symmetry is of God. I don't. I don't. Get well, I mean, it. yeah, we we we've, we've seen before that you know they're all they're very into symmetry. And uh, I think we've even been told, like, maybe it was Shalon. It was like, your name is one letter off of being symmetrical. You're so, like, it's so. You're so great. hot. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, well. They have to I'm strive not... for per- perfection, yeah. but to assume they're perfect is, is blasphemous. Ah, okay. I, uh, I don't get it. But, you know, they also cover their left hands, so. It's true, yeah, they do. And she shows up just in time for the duel to start. And she's like, good, I don't like waiting. I hear you gave away the gem heart you captured. So I guess he hasn't seen her since then. But she's like, man, that was a good. Good job. Undermines Dalinar's claim. We only resist him because of our greed. And Sadius is mad that this duel is happening at all. He's like, everyone was supposed to be too afraid or too dismissive to accept his challenges. And Ayala's like, yeah, I know. And they know I've dropped the right hints, the right promises. But everyone wants secretly wants to be the man who brings down Adolin. And duelists are not a really dependable lot. They're brash, hot-headed, and care too much about showing off. And Sadius is like, ah, this, 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 Dalinar's plan can't be allowed to work. She's like, don't worry, it won't. It's fine. And I also, he's like, look, I helped build, the, I built this kingdom. I know how fragile it is. It should not be this hard to knock down. And then the duel starts, and Adolin is not doing nearly as well as he did in the previous duel. He starts taking hits, and Sadius is like, ugh, sloppy. And Eli tells him that the, she found out what happened at the king's court chambers the, a couple of weeks ago. Someone sabotaged his balcony and so on and so forth. And she's like, it was a crude attempt. And Sadie's like, well, not not so crude if it almost killed him. And I love her. Like, pardon Toral, but almost is a big distinction in assassinations. Which, yeah, it's fair. Yeah, almost all, our close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And... When we first met Sadius, the only thing holding him and Dalinar together was they were both dedicated to preserving the kingdom and Elokar. And now he's like, man, Elokar almost died. How do I feel about that? Not bad, really. I mean, he's going to have to die. There's, there's nothing else for it. I'll probably have to cut his throat myself, I guess, out of respect for Gavilar, of course. Yeah, I got to do it by my own hand. That's that's a true sign of respect, killing your son with my own hand. Yeah. <laughs> he's cutting his throat. He's like, doing this because I love you. <laughs> Now, not you, per se, but your father. I loved your father, Slice. But this does at least tell us for sure that Sadius was not behind 
or even associated with the assassination attempt. I don't know that any of us suspected that he was, but uh, he's an obvious culprit. Yeah, even no, Dower, I was like, nah, that's not him. Uh, yeah, I'll admit, it's like it never crossed my mind for a second that Sadius was behind that. And she's like, who who did this? And she's like, I don't know, it's hard to tell. It's not Ruthar or Aladar. Apparently, they're both solidly in Sadius's camp here. And he's like, maybe Thanadol? Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll see. We'll look into it. And there's a note that as High Prince of Information, he should be the one looking into the assassination attempt on the king, and maybe there's something we can use there. And then we kind of cut back to the duel, and I, I love that he's looking at him, he's like, ah, oh, jeez, like, this is the guy everybody's afraid of? Like, he's, he's garbage out here. This is the guy who's always bragging about how how, how his amazing skill. I He's done better than this out on the battle. Oh, and that's when he gets it. Because like, he's seen Adolin fight. He knows that he's good, that he's better than this. Yeah. He's like, you sly little fox. Like, he's not going to give him too much credit. He goes, now that's almost clever. <laughs> and so Adolin is down here pretending to, he's, he's making it look like a close match. When in reality, he is far more skilled than his opponent and could beat him easily. But because people have been afraid to duel him, it, maybe if he makes it look close, then somebody else will be like, oh, it was pure luck he won that last one. I'll get him. And it'll tempt more people into a duel. And Sadius even thinks, it's like, it's one thing to win. It takes true mastery to win and make it look like you were behind the entire time. Like, this is impressive. He thinks there might be a future for this boy, more so than his father, at least. And Adolin, in what looks like a, a, a squeaker, like pure luck almost, he manages to take Aranev down and win another shard. And like his opponent storms off, complaining about like how lucky his opponent was. <laughs> well, too bad you lost your shards, bro. <laughs> and Sadius is like, you know what? Adolin is all those things you said about duels. They're hot-headed, they're brash, they're, they 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 want to prove themselves. Maybe we can use this. He has passion like his father, but controls it less securely. Can I get him right up to the cliff's edge and then shove him off? And so he says, you know what? Stop discouraging people from fighting. Don't encourage them to do it. Just step back and I want to see what happens. And she says, that sounds dangerous. The boy is a weapon, Toral. And he says, yeah, true, but you're rarely cut by a weapon if you're the one holding its hilt. So he's got a plan to use Adolin to his advantage. And we'll have to see what becomes of that, because I believe this is the last we see of Sadius in this chapter. Although, as we're finishing, he's like, you know, maybe Adolin can, will be the man that Dalinar used to be, and uh, it'll be great. And he's like, no, nah, you know what? You're probably going to have to kill him, too. Don't don't try to pretend otherwise. Be honest at least with oneself. And that's the end of Rule of Blood, which is a fun chapter title. And we get a, a picture from Shallan's sketchbook of the fauna that she's finding, finding out here on the Shattered Plains, or as they approach the Shattered Plains, I guess I should say. And we'll see her find that here. But also, I, I, I didn't notice the first time I looked at it, but like you see you see a little guy with a spear in the picture at the bottom. Oh. And I guess it's Gaz, because he appears to have a, a an eye patch. But... It's just, it, it's so random that there's so many plants and a couple little animals, and it's like, oh, hey, there's Gaz hanging on the back. Man, like, if that, I guess you're right, it would be Gaz because of the eye patch. And if that is him, that is not how I pictured him. I <laughs> I don't know if I have missed descriptions of the dude, but I pictured him as kind of, like, scrawny and stringy. And this guy is, he's built. And I can't tell if, I can't tell if he's just all muscular or he has a gut, but... I think uh, I think she mentions that he has a that she tried to draw him without the paunch at one point when she gave him a drawing of himself. So I guess uh, he's got okay. he he must actually have like some kind of paunch. Now I'm, I went back to when we first meet him to see what kind of description he gives of him. A man lounged in the shade a distance from the eating men. He turned, revealing a face that was so scarred his beard grew in patches, missing one eye. The other one was brown. White knots at his shoulder marked him as a sergeant. Yeah, it doesn't. Like you don't get a, a body description there, right? Interesting. I mean, ideally he was a soldier, even though he acted kind of lazy. You would assume he's got some muscle muscle to him, right? Yeah, true enough. Also, I'll admit, like for some reason, I never knew what a paunch was. <laughs> I know I've seen the word many times, but eh, there you go. I learned something uh, today. Also, like I know Dax said this earlier, but. If anybody's out there reading, and maybe maybe there's more to come with Gaz, but if anybody's out there reading and they're like, yeah, this is when I started to feel bad for Gaz, when I realized, like, he just wanted to have... He had a paunch. He was kind of fat. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I mean I mean the part where he's like, 
you know, we all thought we were going out and fighting for our country, and then we got there, and that's not what it was, and it's, you know, blah, 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 blah. I, I still don't feel bad for gas, so just so everybody's <laughs> clear on that. I'm with Dak. I don't I don't feel bad. All right, we got two opinions. What about Jamie? Do you Are, are you feeling bad for gas yet? I mean, not really. Like, <laughs> he... <laughs> He would have to do a hell of a lot, I think, to redeem himself. He was pretty vile. Fair. Okay. I mean, yeah, he was pretty horrible. Chapter 30 is Nature Blushing, and the epigraph is, "'Tis said it was warm in the land far away when void bringers entered our songs. We brought them home to stay, and then those homes became their own. It happened gradually, and years ahead, it will still be said, "'Tis how it has to be." So, from the listener song of histories, what the hell does that mean? But it is a Shalon section and she has found uh she sees a flare of color it says she's like oh what's that and tin's like i mean who cares right there that color it's plants and tin's like so like is that all tin it's plants divergent flora in an otherwise uniform ecosystem we're going i'm gonna tell macab to steer that way <laughs> uh, so weird it's so excited about science and so the, she goes over there and she's like, oh, I'm, I'm drawing this shit. This is amazing. And so she starts sketching all of these uh, plants that she's found here in this little, like, Joe, I think Joe called it an oasis, which it does seem to be basically what it is. And then Gaz comes in and he's like, man, are those fish? And she says, eels, bright orange ones, it appears. We had some like that in my father's ornamental garden. So there's there are sky eels and there are water eels. And some of the water ones are bright orange, which is a bizarre color, I feel like, for an eel, but whatever. And there are sky eels and there are water eels, and I like to imagine they hate each other. <laughs> they despise each other. Yeah, you there's going to be like, like a, you're supposed to, stupid sky eel. Yeah, there's going to be like a Romeo and Juliet story of like a sky eel and a water eel that hook up and their families dis- disapprove. <laughs> and so yeah. we'll call it West Nile story. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If, th- if this was on Earth, that would be a funnier joke. <laughs> <laughs> Gaz just says uh, that, and everyone's just like, "Gaz, shut the fuck up." He's like, "They're like, what's not? What's the Nile?" West Roshar story, and then quite. Gaz shows up, and he he says to say it, but he wants a sketch, like she's been doing for the others. And she's like, "Okay, sure, of course." Tidies up his uniform, smooths out his paunch, takes some liberties with his chin. Mostly, it's his expression, and so she she makes him look all noble and stuff. And like he's like, "Oh my gosh, is this really what I look like?" And she's just Yes. And she can feel pattern vibrating, like, because that's a lie. And she's like, no, but it's also the truth. Oh, that pattern's just this inbuilt lie detector. (laughs) (laughs) Wrong. Yeah, God, she has has a built-in bullshit meter. Yeah. But I don't know that we know if it works well for others. Like, pattern always knows when she's lying, but that doesn't help her. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That was a lie. I know. Shut up. (laughs) She's like, I don't, uh, I don't deserve this shabby treatment. Pattern's like, buzz. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> oh what What if every time shalon lied pattern just very loudly so everyone can hear was like lie <laughs> <laughs> that would be inconvenient <laughs> i think her i think her aspirations to become a con woman would be over pretty fast it could you imagine tough, right? the, imagine the wedding between her and adeline it's like uh like do you like do you are you happy to take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband yes lie <laughs> <laughs> That's wrong. Maybe she'll really like Adolin. You don't know. I mean, does anybody really like Adolin? Well, he did discover that last episode we did that he has no friends. So Renarin yeah. does. Yeah, his brother likes him. That's true. His brother likes him. I assume his aunt likes him. Slash his dad. Mom. His dad. You know, his his cousin probably likes him. Elokar probably likes him. Yeah. Elokar is his him. cousin, but I, I don't know that we've ever seen them like interact directly. So who knows? Right. And then. Tin shows up. Oh, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I skipped an interesting little bit where she starts drawing a picture and it's a a rocky shore near the ocean with the cliffs. Like it looks like the place where she came ashore, more or less. And there's several shadowy figures helping one another out of the water. And she's like, I swear one of those is Yalb. And she's like, oh, man, yeah, I so wish for them to be alive. This is just a hopeful fancy that I've drawn. And then she draws what just what comes to her again. And it's a woman kneeling over a body, raising a hammer and chisel as if to slam it down on the person's face. And the person beneath her is wooden or maybe even stone. So that's weird. And she's like, why did I draw that? Like, 
the the sailors that makes sense i want them to be alive on a subconscious level but what is this thing supposed to be and then that's when tin shows up and tin's like uh, yeah those drawings are cool but why don't you practice forging signatures that'd be way more useful why she's, like, she's like i have been practicing forging signatures but i need to do this too and there's talk about like tin's like i'm gonna introduce you to some people they'll spoil you real quick your jokes will be dirtier after that and Shalon, like, Tin's like, you, you're so sheltered. Like, I'm going to have to, we're going to have to expose you to some realism. And Shalon's like, I think you'll find my life has not all been uh, nonstop blossoms and cake. And Tin's like, yeah, I'm sure you think that. But the stuff that we have, that we're going to be doing, the kind of things that you have to do if you want to live this life, they're going to mess you up. And Shalon's like, how do you know that I've never done things like that? And Tin says, because you aren't broken. And she's like, perhaps I'm faking. And she's like, yeah, right. Uh-huh. Also... They're trying to make you feel bad for Tin here. I don't feel bad for Tin. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, she chooses to be a con artist. She's like, if you're going to live this life, you're going to have to do all these horrible things. You're like, well, I mean, you decided to do that and continue doing that. So, yeah, I wouldn't feel sorry for her personally. Well, so, you know, you could make the argument that, like, we don't know her past. Maybe that was the only true. way for her to survive. You know, we got We could have a Vin on our hands, but I, you know, don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> And and also just the assumptions like oh your life has been so great up to this and Shalan's like uh, no it hasn't and and Tin's just like oh, fuck off I think I know enough about your life but I actually don't and I'm just going to assume that your life has been sunshine and roses compared to mine so fuck you for thinking that you you know have experienced hardship I'm like whoa back the fuck off lady she's just like did you have to kill your dad Tin I didn't think yeah. so. Tin's like oh what no everybody doesn't do that what are you talking about yeah. Did you have to kill some guy who was really old, but, like, nobody knew he was really old? And, like, a bunch of people reading the book thought he was your dad, but then it turns out he wasn't? What? That's a Lord, that's a Lord Ruler reference. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I was <laughs> not getting there. Because I said she's like Vin. Yeah, that connection did not get made in my mind. It's fine. Nobody, <laughs> nobody listens to Joe. It's funny, actually, because I had never considered or even heard somebody theorize that the Lord Ruler might be Vin's dad until we did the show and Joe in particular was like, I think that I'm, I'm sticking to this theory. And since then, I have seen many people on Reddit who are reading for the first time being like, I think the Lord Ruler might secretly be your dad. Yeah. You know what I it is? I think Joe put that on the universe. You know what it <laughs> is? It's it's the Star Wars you know, spoiler for a movie mm. that came out several years ago. It's the Star Wars Ray Palpatine thing. You know, people are like, oh, that that could be a thing. Uh, this, happened be- this came out before Star Wars. True. Not before the original Star Wars, where Darth Vader was the original dad reveal. But yeah. Correct. I had repressed pretty much most of Rise of Skywalker, so I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, like after after the second movie, I don't even remember which movie was which one. Uh, so Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker. But after after Last Jedi, they basically like we're told like, oh, Ray's parents are just some dudes, right? And yeah, they people sold were upset. Drug money or something. People were were upset, like uh, she, that she wasn't related, and uh, other people were like, not everything has to be part of the Skywalker family or whatever, right? And I was on the side that I'm like, yeah, why can't her parents just be some dudes? Why why does that like diminish her in some way? And then when they went in to do the third movie, they're like, no, it turns out that uh, that's not true. That was bullshit. And I'm just like, well, her parents were nobody's because nobody knew about palpatine's son but so he yeah, wasn't well, lying uh, yeah he just uh, didn't know if there's one thing i've learned lately it's uh let's not debate star wars on the internet that's, that is a short yeah, while away. you strive. know you're not wrong uh, okay so back to tin and shallan <laughs> <laughs> maybe tin will turn or, out to be shallan's mom or finn and shallan their names even rhyme there you go or Tien and Shalon. Uh, she's discovered Kaladin's brother. He got a he, uh, he, cha- he changed Tien, genders. Tien. She, yeah. Tin is like, okay, we're about to reach the Shattered Plains. You got to tell me what this game is that we're running. And Shalon's like, okay, fine. So Dalinar Kolin's son is betrothed to a woman from Yaakov Ed. And Tin's like, oh, and she's not going to arrive. And Shalon says, well, not one he expects. And you look like her? You could say that. <laughs> like, Shalon doesn't lie here. Her, like... Shalon isn't showing up when they expected her, and she does look like Shalon, so... Yeah. I, s- I spent most of this just going, like, Tin, Tin's like, all right, I need to know what this con is, and I just went, I remain unconvinced as to what business any of this is of yours. Well, she's offered to help, so obviously, I mean, if she's going to help, she probably needs to know. 
help in the yeah, biggest she... fucking air quotes I can imagine. <laughs> right. <laughs> like help herself to some cold hard cash yeah. slash spheres. Yeah. Get a get a percentage off the top and that's helping. I'm going to help. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. <laughs> Okay, but no, she starts helping right here because uh, first she's like, hey, that's actually that's a good scam. I, I thought it was going to be blackmail, which is tough, but this is doable. You we, you could you could manage this. So what's your plan? And she's like, well, I'll introduce myself to Colin and say I'm the woman his son's supposed to marry and let him set me up. And she's like, no, 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 no. He, you, you don't want to do that. If you put yourself in his debt, it makes you seem needy and that undermines your ability to be respected. What you want to do is set up somewhere else completely and look like you're self-sufficient. Maintain that air of mystery. Don't be too easy for his son to capture. So Which, straight straight away, she is just here. It's like, okay, I am here to complicate the plot. And I'm like, fuck <laughs> off. Just, you know, her advice might be good. We uh, we don't know. Did Shalane ever actually try to convince her that she really was Shalane Bavar? She tried briefly, and like this lady was not buying it. So she's like, okay, fine. You got me. I'm 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 a con artist. Hmm. I mean, her her help would be helpful if, like, this was middle school and she's, like, trying to play hard to get. Even then, that's not actually that helpful. But anyway, I don't think it's good advice. <laughs> you, you, you're just, like, hard to get. Don't get got. Yeah. Uh, and she's like, okay, so which son is it? And she says Adolin. And Tin's like, I don't know if that's better or worse than Renner. Uh, Adolin's a flirt by reputation. That's probably why his dad wants him married off. It might be tough to keep his attention. He's been almost engaged like a dozen times. I think maybe he has been engaged once before. Huh. Okay. But she's like, that just makes my advice even more important. Adolin will never be interested if you're not in some way unattainable. And Shalon's like, well, I mean, it's hard to be unattainable when we're already engaged. And Tin's like, eh, it's still important. And you're the one who wants to do the love scam. They're tricky, but safe. We'll figure it out. <laughs> like, she's just like, you're the one who wants to do the scam, Shalon. Just listen to me. Like, nobody, nobody invited you, my lady. I'm just saying. Yeah. And for the first time, Shalon's kind of starting to get nervous. Like, what does what is going to happen? Like, Yasna's not here anymore, so oh, maybe I'm maybe I'm going to have trouble with Adolin. And she hadn't heard that uh, he's like a ladies' man, apparently. So don't worry, you heard wrong. <laughs> but uh, she ends the she ends the chapter kind of determined. Like she's like oddly, she found herself excited about the prospect of what they're going to be doing, and that's the end of the chapter. So good for you, Shalon. Chapter 31, Smoke Form. This one is very similar to the other Smoke Form section that we had. It's a little bit different, and it's from a different song. It's from the Song of Secrets. I don't remember. I don't think the other one was the Song of Secrets. But smoke Form for hiding and slipping tween men. Form of power, power like surges of spren. Do we dare wear this form again? It spies. Crafted by gods, this form we fear. By unmade touch, it's cursed to bear. Form from shadow and death is near. It lies. So smoke form still sounding kind of cool. I gotta <laughs> say, Kaladin has returned from his expedition, which we saw him meet up with Shalon and uh, her convoy. Like they were a day and a half out of the plains by by caravan, which I guess is slower than just dudes on horses. But and he seems to get back like a day before her. So they haven't been in any hurry with the caravan, it seems like. And Kaladin arranged ahead of time to for the whole group to like get cheered when they showed back up. And they're all going to get some stew as well. So, you know, nothing wrong with that. Tonight, they get treated like members of Bridge Four. And he, he gets his stew. He's going to sit there. He's kind of looking up at the stars. Some of the stars moved. So, star spread. Nothing to be surprised by. I, I don't feel like we've heard a lot about the stars here, but that, that, that strikes me as interesting. It's hard to look up when you're being constantly beaten down. Yeah, you're not wrong. Somebody comes up. It's Pitt from Bridge 17. And he come, he's come over because he's like, look, I, I just want to say I'm sorry. Back when we were bridgemen, like, it's so hazy, but I remember being glad when your crew got sent out instead of mine. And I remember hoping you'd fail since you dared to walk with your chin up. And Colin's like, it's not your fault, man. It's it's okay. Blame Sadius. Hey, Pitt, it's not your fault. Don't do this to me, man. Pitt, it's not your fault. <laughs> not you, man. Don't do this. It's not your fault, Pitt. Uh, sorry, I lost my place thinking about Sorry. That. Yeah, that's a, that's a good scene. Yeah. Pitt's like, I'm going to have to do like this training with the other people from Bridge 17, huh? Cal's like, yeah, with Tef's help, but that's that's the plan. You think you can do it? And Pitt's like, I'll just have to pretend to be you, sir. Then goes off to eat his stew. A cute little moment. Right? It is. And Kaladin, in his mind, is like giving Teft all the credit here. He's like, you did it, Teft. I don't know how you did it, but you did it. These 40 guys are going to be ready soon. 
And where is Teft? Anyway? Also, yeah, where is Teft? And this, we didn't touch on this, but I, this is thinking back on it. It's got me worried. Like, what? It, what, what where did Teft go? What's happening to Teft? Mm-hmm. It is almost lost Tommy Ooh, a while back. I think, I think yeah, when when Kaljan was practicing his lashings and stuff in when he's fighting against like Rock and Lopin mm-hmm. and, and the Chasm. Yeah, Teft shows up there. Okay, that may be the last time. And then Calvin looks up just in time to see Rock shooing away a lanky man in Arden's robes. And he's like, what's that? And that guy keeps loitering around here with a sketchbook, wants to draw a Bridgman because we're so famous, you see. <laughs> just, just Calvin's like, okay, well, that's weird, but whatever. So I, I told you guys to keep a lookout for an appearance by uh, Naz. And ah. There you go. Oh. See, I, I had it in my now. brain. <laughs> yeah, I had it in my brain that that might have been like, Seth in disguise, like scoping things out, or like a, a ghost blood, or even what was the other thing I thought it might be? Not Hoyd, but like I thought it might have been like even the, because we were going back and forth from perspectives, I thought it might have been Shalon like disguised as an Ardent so she could draw them, like practicing her con skills. But oh. Naz makes more sense. Yeah, if uh, if you remember when it came up before, we had. The drawing of the Bridge Four tattoos, and Naz's note said, "I had to spend hours watching Bridge men to sketch their stupid forehead glyphs, so you could have them." I'm pretty sure this is how they were designed. Yeah. And so there you go. He had his sketch pad, and he was drawing some Bridgemen. Grumpy, grumpy man. <laughs> and, and so Rock keeps chasing him off. I guess he's like, "Get out of here, you!" And like Kellen thinks, like that's weird stuff from art for an Ardent to do, but all Ardents are kind of weird. So I guess whatever. And that's that's the leader of the the guard for the king. Ah, eh, that's weird, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> True. I mean, the king's not here. But... I know, but still, like, he's not like that suspicious. He's just like, ah, eh, Ardens are weird. What are you gonna do? Yep. He's, got a, he's got a sketch pad. What's he gonna do? I guess. He's gonna draw the king to death. Pff, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, just... he's clearly never played a game of Pictionary with me. <laughs> just makes me think of like one of my favorite bits from Codex Alira. In the very first book, there's this one obstructive bureaucrat who's just hanging around with like uh, his numbers ledger. Everyone hates him because he's a pain in the ass and he's just constantly getting in the way. And then like at the end of that book, the big battle happens and like and you don't and you don't know what's happened to everyone. And then after the battle, like everyone, all the heroes of the battle are getting honored, and that guy steps up to get an honor from like the from the leaders. Because he took out basically a giant angry cassowary with his accounts ledger. He was protecting some children. And he beat it to death with his book. Oh, yeah. That's true. I, I, you're, you're, you're telling the story, and I'm like, I don't remember this until you get to the part about him beating the bird with the book. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I never read those. I still haven't. All right, that's not a spoiler. It's the most minor of characters. <laughs> the, the first one, which is when that happens, is a little bit rough, but they're pretty good overall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Aeronauts win last. I got like halfway through that. And I'm like, I can't do this. Oh, I love Aeronauts win. List. The uh, the cats are great. Point of the story was now I want to see Naz beating the shit out of someone with his sketch pad. <laughs> who who wouldn't want to see that? Yeah, well, we know we know over in like Skadriel, he's got like kind of a like action thief thing going on where he's like stealing stuff and jumping out of gondolas and shooting ghost guns at people. So uh, mm. it could happen. You could yeah. kill someone with a sketch pad. You yeah. could. In fact, I think I think Brandon has said at some point that he sees Naz in his mind is like the James Bond of the Cosmere. <laughs> he's just like what? <laughs> he's the James Bond, but he has That's to run so all awesome. these errands for Chris. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the most underutilized James Bond of all time. He's just like, you want me to get some drawings today? I mean, I guess I was <laughs> going to try to, like, assassinate this guy who's trying to been ki- who's been trying to kill you for weeks. But if that's what you want, I mean. <laughs> I'm here to he, serve. He also had to like dig up Shalon's sketches from the bottom of the ocean or something. <laughs> yeah, he's just like God, it has a snorkel. It's like, all right, I guess this is I guess this is what I'm doing today. He, come, he comes back from every mission like two days late, and Chris is like, "What were you doing?" And Naz's like, "Hooked up." <laughs> there was a, like a weird romance between him in on Skadriel, him and uh, I almost called her Nikki Heat, but uh, Nick, Nikki Savage. Oh, yeah, that's right. right. I forgot about that. Oh, so yeah, he's he, he's out there stealing stuff, shooting people, loving the ladies, you know. Yeah, he's doing he's doing he's doing it, you know, for all those people who are like, where's the guy who works behind the scenes but still gets like the chicks? There he is. 
Naz. Ke- Kelsier stole his knife that one time. Yeah. Um, we, we cut back to Shalon, who Tin is trying to show her how to, like, do, like, uh, we'll call it, like, ledger domain with spheres, like, palming them and hiding them or whatever. And Tin's, Tin's like, oh, I heard the replacement hit as she's, like, swapping stuff out. And Shalon goes, dry nets. I thought I had it. And Tin's like, dry nets? Yeah, it's a curse. I heard it from some sol- some sailors. Shalon, do you know what that means? And she's like, yeah, like, like for fishing, right? The nets are dry because they didn't catch any fish, so it's bad. And Tin is just like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do my very <laughs> best to corrupt you. Uh, also, like, what does dry nets mean? I honestly don't think we ever have found out like, what it's uh, supposed to mean. <laughs> yeah, like, Shalon's logic makes perfect sense. Like, ah, dry nets, we didn't catch any fish. Like, what, what does it actually mean if it doesn't mean that? When we read this... For for this week, I went and looked it up to see if, like, Brandon had ever explained this or something, and I just didn't remember, or maybe it was, like, a question-answer thing, and there's not. There's people on Reddit, like, guessing, but there does not seem to be an official explanation for what it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's a shame. That means it's one of those things, by the time an explanation comes, it won't be satisfying. Right. It's probably, like, or you could just write it off as, like, well, it's an idiomatic thing that refers to this thing in their culture, and so, like, it's not really going to translate well. Yeah. I think I think my favorite my favorite potential explanation somebody came up with was like maybe it is like similar to the fishing thing, but it's like you're trying to catch a girl or something and you didn't get anybody. So like it's mm. it's kind of what she's saying, but not exactly. And I'm like, yeah, eh, I kind of buy that. OK, <laughs> there's plenty of fish in the sea. Yeah. And I didn't get one. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Anyway, maybe someday we will learn what dry nets is supposed to be. Audience, if if you have fun ideas about what dry nets is, feel free to send in via email or comment. I'm curious. So she's like, yeah, just maybe don't use sailor curses for now, please. And she's like, okay, fine. And she's like, have you been working on your accents? And Shalon's practicing her Thalen accent. She's like, good, good. We'll get around to costuming once we have more resources. I I, I love. The, it's like yeah we gotta get gotta get some good costumes going like yeah, she doesn't she, she doesn't say disguises she says costumes yeah I'm like wait what and Tin, there, Tin's like man i can't wait to see your face when you have to go out in public with that hand of yours uncovered and she's like what she's like i mean yeah like west of marat almost all women go about with both hands uncovered so if you want to pretend if you're gonna go out there then you're gonna have to fit in but it's immodest it's like it's a hand shalon you Vorans are so prim. The hand looks exactly like your other hand. And Shalon's like, well, I mean, a lot of women have breasts that aren't much more pronounced than male ones. That doesn't make it right to go around with no shirt like a man. And Jin's like, well, actually, out in some of the Reshi Isles and in Erie, uh, women go around topless all the time. It gets hot up there. We saw that. We were, we saw, we were up in the Reshi Isles at one point and uh, saw people swimming naked off of the giant crab island. So and Shalon's like, you're just messing. You're trying to provoke me now. And Jin's like, yeah, yeah, I am. And she's like, do you really still think you're experienced and worldly? You blush at the mere mention of exposing your hand. And then there's there's a bit of a she's like, look, showing off your hand isn't the toughest thing you're going to need to do. Not the toughest by a breeze or a storm wind. And Shalon's like, what? And Tin's like, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it later. That's she's hinting at something there, but we're not sure what. Yeah, it's kind of I don't know. It's kind of gross. It's like, yeah, you're going to have to like seduce men and then like, you know. I, I that's where my brain goes like she's going to have mm. to like use feminine wiles to get what she wants and i, I don't know that our shalon devar is the person for that <laughs> yeah maybe not and we cut we get like insight of the war camps or close to but it's getting dark and the war camps don't let you in after dark so they decide that they're going to camp the caravan is going to camp out and we'll approach the war camps in the morning and Tin is like, hey, uh, bring your food back. We'll, you know, have dinner over here and uh, I might have some news for you. And Shalon's uh, about your homeland. And Shalon's like, OK, well, that's nice. And Tin is trying to feel her out here. She's like, I mean, I'd, I just have expected you to be more interested considering. Shalon's like, considering what? She's like, so you don't know. That's what I thought. Like, Tin is uh, not just going to come out and ask her or trust her on how much she knows or doesn't know. She's she has she's just trying to trick her. Uh, it, uh, it just seems like every conversation with Tin is Tin trying to trick you in some way. And Tin, Shalon gets kind of annoyed about it. She's like, there are, there's lots of stuff I don't know, Tin. I don't know how to build a wagon or speak Iriali, and I certainly don't know how to prevent you from being annoying. Not that I haven't tried to figure out all three. I like that she's tried to figure out how to build a wagon, but Tin says, your Vedan king is dead. She's like, 
And Avatar? Dead? Huh. So his son's going to inherit? Like, I mean, he would if he wasn't also dead, along with six of the high princes. Yeah, they say the assassin in white, uh, that guy who killed the Alethi king six years back? Yeah, he got him. Six high princes? Which ones? But yeah, I don't know for certain. And Shalon wants to know about her high prince, Valam. And she says, yeah, he was fighting for succession, the reports say. Uh, I should get some more information tonight. And so Shalon wants to know how this affects her family, because the whole country, is if they're in the middle of a huge succession war, it could mean, well, who knows what for her people. She lost her span read when the ship sank, so she can't communicate with them. And then she notes, like, Tin suspected I didn't know, but didn't tell me until now. What else is she not sharing? And that's where that The happened. con artist lady is not trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who would have thought, right? Shocker. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. 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 Well, not that shocked. Not that shocked. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all minds go to the same thing. Yep. We get to our last chapter, The One Who Hates. And this uh, this epigraph is a little interesting, I feel like. The spren betrayed us, it's often felt. Our minds are too close to their realm. That gives us our forms, but more is then demanded by the smartest spren. We can't provide what humans lend. Though broth are we, their meat is men. From the listener song of spren. That is deeply confusing. <laughs> well, it's, so the, the spren betrayed us is often felt. And so they're like, okay, so the spren used to be cool with us, and now they're cool with the humans. And apparently there's something about the humans that, like, gives the Spren more than the Parshendi can give them, is what it sounds like. And Kaladin is dreaming. He's in the storm, flying around. He's like, oh, I've done this before. Like, I've been here before. But this time he turns around and he sees the giant face that he saw in the storm that one time. The Storm Father himself. And the voice says, son of honor. And Kaladin's like, this is real. You're real? She trusts you. He's like, Sil? Yeah, she does. She should not. You will kill her. You will murder my child and leave her corpse to wicked men. Oh, that's that's freaking dark. All right. Yeah, uh, I thought we were having start, a good time. Who starts a conversation like that? I just sat down. down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's OK. We've, we've heard about I mean, didn't we hear pattern be like, you're going to murder me or something? Mm, yeah. And so I, I guess I get that. But I, I feel like it's a big jump to them. It's like. You will give her corpse to wicked men. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? That doesn't sound like me. <laughs> that doesn't, uh, doesn't sound like a thing I do. Oh. But I mean, I don't know. But also, it's like, it, it, again, it just highlights we don't know that much about Spren. Like, mm. Spren die and they leave a corpse? That's news to me. This is new information. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, like, I assumed uh, they would just wink out of existence. And, and Calvin goes like, I will not. And the father <laughs> says, you begin it already. And he's like, okay, well, how can I stop that? How can I protect her? You are human. You will be a traitor. You're not giving me a lot of uh, options here, my my, my dude. Mm. And then kind of like uh, on a different note, the Stormfather's like, ah, so it will end. He comes like, wait, what? what? What just changed? I feel he comes for you, little traitor. I am sorry. Okay, you're throwing a lot at me right now and no explanations. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really confused. I'm asleep right now. You get that, right? Like, my brain's not not doing it. I, I don't get it. And then in front of Are him... Are you actually talking to me? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good question, right? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, in fairness, we've already had one god talking, and, like, we thought it was a two-sided conversation. It turned out it wasn't. Mm. This is accurate. <laughs> the Kaladin sees a second storm, one of red lightning... So enormous as to make the continent, the world itself, nothing in comparison. And everything fell into shadow. And the Stormfather says, I'm sorry, he comes. And that's when Kaladin wakes up. So, I need to point out, I when I was predicting last week, like I assumed the ch chat title, The One Who Hates, would be relevant to Kaladin and Amaram. Uh, and I completely forgot and was brutally reminded in this chapter, it's like, Odium hatefulness of course he would be the one who hates why well, how the fuck did i miss that i have disappointed the muppets <laughs> honestly i was wondering i was like i feel like this is a connection you guys could make but nobody did so yeah okay yeah but yeah so anyway he wakes up he's in the king's conference room with uh like adolin and renar and stuff because there's a high storm out they're all together again also hell of a place for the king of the the leader of the god to take a nap 100 percent, right like and and Adolin calls him. He's like sleeping on the job, huh, bridge boy? But uh, yeah, it's uh, you're not you're not doing your best job, my man. If you're falling asleep. Although Adolin's also kind of impressed. Like you can sleep during a high storm. That's uh, that's impressive. Almost as impressive as how much you drool while you're dozing. <laughs> he just can't say anything nice. 
I mean, that's a, that was a pretty good line, though. Yeah, you're not wrong. On the other hand, Adolin and Renarin are talking about that the meeting Adolin had with the Parshendi shard bearer. And apparently it's been a while. He's like, I'd almost given up hope of it happening. The Parshendi's messenger took so long to arrive. And Renar's just surprised that that shard bearer he met was like, are you sure it was a woman? A female shard bearer? Oh, weird. And Adolin's like, yeah, no, I don't know. The Parshendi are weird, my man. I tell you. So, hang on. Are they saying, like, because Esh and I said we will send a messenger, don't kill him. Yep. They're saying that messenger arrived? I think that is what they're saying, yes. Okay, so I read that right. That's a hell of a thing to just hand wave over. Like, right. The, the Parshendi sent a messenger in that wasn't shot on sight by the Alethi, given the Alethi culture. That's a hell of a thing. I need to know more about that. Agreed. It's a, it's a thing. It's a weird thing to jump over. Yeah. Like, yeah, that happened. Ooh. and There will be a meeting now. But Kaladin is freaking out because the Stormfather just told him that someone is coming. And he's like, his majesty, we're, like, where's the king? And Aelin's like, he's in the bathroom, dude. Just chill. And Kaladin's like, no, we got to go. We got to get out of here. And he goes over to the the room where Dalinar and Navani are holed up to because of his visions. And he, like, opens the door. And we cut briefly back to Shallan huddled in her wagon thing to protect herself from the high storm. And her slaves are in there, too. But also Pattern is in there. And Pattern is making a creepy noise. And everyone's freaking out. And as she leans down, she can hear Pattern's words. It's just bad, bad, so bad. Yeah, that's not good. Really effective mood building here. It's like, what the fuck is going down? <laughs> yeah, that's true. And then just, yeah, to add to that, Syl is out, you know, flying around. And she comes to Calvin. She's like, Calvin, something's wrong. He says, yeah, I know. He's coming. Who, the storm? The one who hates. The darkness inside. Calvin, yeah. he's watching. Something's going to happen. Something bad. Walter White, the one who knocks. <laughs> And that's when Kyle's like, get the king, we're leaving. And Aiden's like, what? And that he, he goes in and uh, into the room with Navani and Dalinar. And Navani's like, what are you doing? How dare you? And Kyle's like, wake him, we gotta go. And the king's like, it's nonsense. Like, he shows up, nonsense, what are you babbling about? Kyle's like, we're not safe, we got to go. And everyone, like, Adolin's jumping in, like, that's ridiculous. This is the safest place in the work camps. Why do you want to leave and drag the king out in the middle of a storm? And then Dalinar wakes up, and he's like, what's going on? And Kyle says, it's not safe. And Dalinar says, Why, what makes you say that? And Kellen says, instinct, sir. And Dalinar thinks about it. He goes, okay, we go then. And Elokar's like, what, what are you talking about? You put this man in charge of your guard, Elokar. If he thinks that we're not safe here, we should do what he says. Like, you gave him this authority. Let him exercise his authority. But there's an implied, like, we'll go along for now, but it better be worth what you're putting us through. And so Kellen goes out and he, he tells his other men, we're going. Beld and Haber, you're the advanced squad. Scout the way. Then we'll go. We'll go down the back way too, like through the kitchens. Moash, you and Ralinar are the lead guard. You wait till we're out of sight and then you follow. Mart and Eth, you stay by the king's side. So, okay. The whole group is heading out. You got the, the guys ahead, you got the guys behind, and most of the people in the middle. Yep. Good thing we didn't care about the guys ahead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Hopper, like, I, I don't remember. Uh, who's the other guy? Beld. Beld. I don't remember Beld. Hopper we've known. Hopper we've seen Hopper the first times. Richmond. Yeah. That's true. That's true. He, he got like injured and Kaladin nursed him back to health and he was the first guy to be like, I'm with oh, you. Oh, that was that guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's Did he, right. They don't say that he definitively dies though, right? Like that he, I, I they say they see the other guy's body, but we don't know about Hopper. I think you you may be right. But we'll see. We're about to get there. <laughs> yeah. And as they go, Dalinar's like, uh, yeah, I want to know exactly what prompted this once we're safe. And then they round a corner and all like there's these lamps or these like things filled with glowing spheres all around inside the building to light the place. And suddenly they round a corner in this corridor and it's dark up ahead. And Aiden's like, what what happened to the spheres? Where's the and Calum thinks the light has been drained. And as he gets closer, he can see that there's a hole in the wall sliced directly in the rock and there's cold a cold breeze coming through and that's when he comes across Beld on the ground a body lying where the corridor is crossed it wore a blue uniform Beld yeah no I guess we don't see and the, they all just kind of stare at the body and Sil's like he's here that's not creepy at all and here's where uh it's terrifying Seth walks out of the darkness stepping into the corridor holding his long silvery blade like, he's kind of dragging it behind him, I guess, because it says it cuts a trail in the stone floor. Badass. Yeah. He's wearing the white clothes. He's got the bald head, pale skin. It's a shin. And Kaladin's like, holy shit. I recognize this guy. Everyone has heard of him, but Kaladin saw him 
when he was flying through the high storm that one time. He saw him killing some guys. He didn't realize who he was. Yeah. But I think we called that, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I don't believe it. So and then like, he's believe it or not, you're still gonna fry, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Or he burn. Sees I don't remember that line. Stormlight coming off of Seth's body. And he's like, holy shit, it's a, he's a surge binder, too. And Dalinar takes charge. He's like, Adolin with me. Renarin, protect the king. Take him back the way we came. And Renarin's like, Dad, I can fight. And Dalinar's like, go. Protect the king. Like, listen to me. And Moash and Ralinor also go back. And they take Navani and the king and take them back the other direction. And as Elokar is whimpering as they leave, like, he's come for me. I always knew he would. Like, he came for my father. Yeah, honestly, I felt for Elikar in this moment. This is literally his worst nightmare. It's just walked into the room in front of him. Yep. Right. And so the only three people left uh, to fight Seth, we got Dalinar, we've got Adolin, and we've got Kaladin. And Adolin gets his shard blade out, but he's the only one with a shard blade other than Seth. So Dalinar picks up a spear from one of the dead guys, and Kaladin has his spear. And it's like, okay, let's do this. And I like Adolin's like, dude, let me handle this. He has a shard blade. Also, I don't like the look of that glow, which, yeah, no shit. But then Dalinar has one of my favorite Dalinar lines in this book where he's just like, I'm not asleep at the table this time, you bastard. You're not taking another one from me. Yeah. And then they go for it. Like, they attack. And Seth, like, jumps on up to the ceiling and runs. And Adolin's like, holy shit, it's true. Like, he's actually running on walls and stuff. And then he touches Adolin's chest and sends Adolin to the ceiling. And... Like, they they do not know how to handle this. And it, like, we get the impression from, I mean, Adolin being like, oh my gosh, it's true. That, like, they've heard the stuff that he can do. They just don't believe it. So they did not prepare in any way to fight it, which was a mistake. Because a lot of guys saw what the stuff that Seth did when he attacked and killed Gavilar that day. Yeah, but how many of them survived to tell about it? Oh, okay, well, that's fair. Like, yeah, it was they, just, like, one one or two guys. They were always, like, they went crazy. Like, like, they lost their minds in the battle after the king died. Like. That's a fair point. And, uh, like, he just, like, Seth immediately cuts through both of Dalinar and Kaladin's spears. And it's like, oh, man, this isn't good. And then he just, like, bitch slaps Dalinar and sends him to the ground. Like, he, and Kaladin thinks, like, you can't just ignore, like, a surge binder slap. And Kaladin's sitting here, like, he can't be a windrunner, can he? And Dalinar's down, and Adolin's screaming for his dad. And he's gotten to his feet. But just as he gets to his feet on the ceiling, the stormlight runs out, and he falls again. <laughs> And Seth is over here like, I'm sorry, I don't want to do this. And the count's like, well, I'm not going to give you the chance to do this. And he he goes after him. And then it's like, it's just Kaladin and the spear as the world was meant to be. So he, he kind of takes him on and stands up to him a bit. But uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of stormlight. He didn't pick up new spheres before his guard shift. So he's like, ah, sloppy, stupid. Jeez. And there's a moment where he thinks he has him. He can feel what's about to happen. He's like, I got him. But somehow Seth is also just incredibly fast too fast and he doesn't manage to to get the blow that he thought he was going to get and then the seth shard blade comes into play he cuts through the remainder of kaladin's spear and i like the way he describes this where it's like kaladin is so trained so he has his spear moves so ingrained in him that he makes what would be the right move against anything but a shard blade where he moves his spear to block shard blade goes straight through the spear snicker snack as it were and then through Kaladin's arm just below the elbow. It's so all of a sudden his arm does not work anymore. His right arm below the elbow is just dead. It turned gray and dull, lifeless. And then Sil You don't see like, that coming. Oh, right. I mean, yeah, the 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 Star Wars analogy is uh, pretty good there. Although it makes me think of like uh, the Dresden Files when Harry's hand gets all burned. Oh, uh, like, yeah, yeah. You don't expect that. And Cal Sil comes in like Kaladin and Kaladin's like I can't beat him. He's crying tears of pain and frustration. He's one of us. He's a radiant. And still says, no, he's something far more terrible. No spren guides him, Kaladin. Please get up. Okay. Interesting wrinkle. Again, we need yep. more information about that. 100%. We've talked about, like, does Seth have a spren? Have we just not seen the spren that lets him use these powers? Sil says, no, he does not. And Dalinar has gotten back to his feet. He's like, I won't let you have him. You took my brother. You're not going to take the only thing I have left of him. And Seth's like, Oh, but I'm not here for him. I'm here for you. And he knocks Dalinar back down to the ground. And Kaladin's trying to get to him in time, trying to protect Dalinar, but he's too slow. And the assassin swings his blade. And instead of dodging, Dalinar catches it. He brings the heels of his palms together around the sides of the blade just as it comes down and stops it. 
Bum, bum, bum. This is quite a move, but how the hell did he do that? Right? Yeah. And Seth is uh, surprised by this, as you would be. And in that moment of surprise, Kaladin, like, tackles him and just coincidentally tackles him into that space where a big hole was cut in the wall and they fall out into the open air. And that is the end of our chapters. So a lot of stuff that we could uh, predict here. I I guess I can read you guys the next chapter titles and uh, we'll move into what is going to happen. Where are we going? We still have two chapters before the end of part two. And this was a very dramatic section that we ended on here. So it's like. Does the fight just continue through the next two chapters or is something else dramatic going to happen to actually wrap up part two? Or maybe maybe it's just like a, a more relaxed downhill from here. And we'll end on a on a more chill note than the middle of a huge battle. Kaladin and Seth woke up on the rocks and it's like, uh, hey, are we cool? <laughs> I'll go home. You go home. Just all right. Okay. We'll call it a draw. <laughs> so chapter 33 is called Burdens. Chapter 34 is called Blossoms and Cake, and that's the uh, last two chapters of part two. We're reading, by the way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chapters for next time, because we have... Whoa, dude, I'm not even going to attempt on the titles then. That's too many <laughs> chapters. Well, the interludes are a little easier because some of them are na- the names of characters. But oh, okay. uh, yeah, we have four interludes once again. The first one is called The Rider of Storms. The second one is called Zahel. Ooh. The, third, yeah, the third one is called Town. The fourth one is called the, A Form of Power. And then chapter 35, the first part of uh, part three, or the first chapter of part three is called The Multiplied Strain of Simultaneous Infusion. God. Wow. Yeah, right. So um, there's your chapters for next time. We got uh, a bunch of, bunch of chapters to read, but a lot of the, uh, the interludes in particular, in fact, I think all the interludes this time are pretty short. So um, – what do you guys think? Where are we going? What's going to happen? What's going to happen to Kaladin and Seth flying out the window? Not even a real yeah. window. And uh, where are we going in the story? Burdens. Well, the burdens. I, I, I since that's the title of the chapter, I'm going to guess that their, you know, their fight concludes at some point, and basically it's like the burden of of being a guard to the king, the burden of my oath as a killer to kill Dalinar. Like, you know, those are the burdens that they both they both bear burdens. So let's go with that. So I think their fight's going to conclude. I think. Seth is going to decide that killing Dalinar at right at this moment needs to be reassessed. Kaladin's going to give him pause, and he's going to be like, wait, I need to approach this differently. This guy, he's got some Stormlight as well, which is weird. So I need to figure out what, what the deal is with that. And after that, man, I have no clue about any of the interludes or... Any of that stuff. I would guess that the section before the interludes is maybe Shallan finally making it to the Shattered Plains and everybody's in a dour move and she's like, hey guys, I'm here. And they're like, <laughs> oh, hi. And then that extremely long chapter, I feel like that has to be a Navani perspective at the end because the at the start of the new part because like that's a really weird title. But yeah, I mean, Seth's here. Stuff's maybe going to start springing into action we might get like some hard plot rolling but at the same time maybe that won't happen because if seth does escape and run away to come back and fight another day then we might have a little bit of time on our hands so ah, you know if you'd asked me before we read this section (laughs) what i thought was going to happen i might have said something different i really just don't know i'm at a loss this week i just want to know I don't want to think about predict what's going to happen because I want to read it and know what happens. <laughs> when Seth shows up, everything you had planned just goes out the window. Right, exactly. And that's his thing. I guess I didn't mention, like, uh, we haven't talked about the uh, who the perspectives are for part three, but we're about to start that. So I guess I can give you guys that, too. Part three is called Deadly, and the perspective characters Deadly. are Shallan, Kaladin, Adolin, and Navani. Okay, so I might not be hmm. off on that first uh, chapter. Still no Dalinar. No, still no Dalinar. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you, you've uh, you've got an interesting point where it, uh, Seth has never faced someone that we know of with Stormlight before. So, but also Kaladin appears to have run out of Stormlight. He's like, damn it, I didn't get any new spheres. So whether or not Seth will get a chance to realize that Kaladin has Stormlight is an open question. Well, I, I think he realized by the movements that Kaladin was making earlier. But oh, also, maybe, yeah. but also, you know. My fight some spheres on the way down. <laughs> As you're falling, there's some spheres. Sweet. Could be. 
okay. growing out of the walls like in the pits of Hathson. <laughs> yeah. If he was still upstairs, you could you could make a guess like he'll he'll get some spheres off one of the dead guys or there's other there's other lamps back up the way they came. Maybe he could run up there and get some stormlight, but sure. he's out the window. So Yeah. Well, and we know I mean, I feel like he has done like pretty amazing things without directly knowing he was using Stormlight. So I feel True. like there's and and I know the high storm is like over, but like if Stormlight really is from the storm, maybe just being out yeah. in a high storm allows you to have some modicum of Stormlight. I mean, we talked about that that may, that maybe how he survived being out in the storm that one time was. Well, he did have a, a sphere then, too. He but. had one sphere. That's true. Was... Right. But, yeah, I mean, if the storm is what infuses the the, the the spheres, then by that property of infusion, maybe it doesn't have to go into a sphere for it to infuse into him. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Okay, well, fair guess. I guess we'll find out, huh? Yeah, I mostly have the same uh, burdens. That's got to be more of Kaladin versus Seth, like the burdens of their duty. If we cut um, away from Kaladin and Seth right now and didn't come back to them until, like, part three, that would be kind of messed up. That would suck. But, yeah, I feel like... I agree with Joe. I think Seth will probably win, but he's not going to kill Kaladin because Seth doesn't like killing, and he will recognize this, like, oh, kill, like, killing this dude now. I've already taken his arm. He can't fight back. Like, killing him will not get me any closer to killing Dalinar, and it's just going to be a waste of a life, so I'll just let it go. And But then Kaladin will just follow him as 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 he goes, and they just... You know, trying to figure each other out. I don't know what kind of relationship that will have, but yeah, maybe maybe they'll actually have a conversation and we'll learn some more or something. I, I don't know. I don't know where it will go from there. And yeah, Blossoms and Cake, that's got to be Shalan arriving at the Shattered Plains, like Joe said, and everyone's just going to be super down. And she's like, oh, rough time, huh? <laughs> Tough yeah. room. Jeez. Yeah. So, so like, look, I know you're all having a bad time, but I just want to tell you all that Yasna's is dead. You know, that'll be great. <laughs> interludes so i think like in the first interlude section eshenai's chapters were the ones that didn't have her name as the title mm, i think so so yeah i like to think that now that seth has shown back up because the alethi have associated seth with the parshendi before because obviously with galala like they're like they're proposed negotiations are going to break down as a result because it was like what did you like you sent him again and she'll be like the fuck are you guys talking about we haven't seen him since that night and it's like he showed up here trying to kill us like that's got to be you guys so yeah negotiations will break down as a result of that god only knows what Zahel will be doing i just assume there'll be more hints about his home planet whatever that is because i will <laughs> beat this drum until i die and then town and wit i assume are hanging out town is just trying to acclimate to the new time and wit will be manipulating him <laughs> that does sound like wit yep yep i mean it'd be nice we haven't seen like, like we've been talking about oh man we haven't seen seth all book we haven't seen wit all book where mahoy at mm, yeah, sure. and granted he doesn't tend to show up that often in the other books anyway but still also uh, he he was he was pretty heavily recurring in way of kings so mm -hmm. his absence is missed and then start of part three i think yeah that's got to be shalana and navani getting to know each other I don't know how that's going to go because, again, like she's bringing news that Shalan is dead. So, or so everyone believes. She's not actually. We're, we're all certain, but they don't know that. And yeah, just we I guess wedding prep. <laughs> and Abel is like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you expect me to get married now? And and Devani's like, you f fucking right, I do. <laughs> I might be your new mom soon. You listen to what I say. <laughs> I like the idea of Kaladin and Seth, like. They've had a big fight. They fell to the ground. Kaladin is one of his arms is dead. Maybe let's have a talk. Let's chat. Let's talk this uh, out. Do we really need to stab each other? Oh, no, I don't imagine it like that. I mean, I'm picturing more of a Seth just like, a, well, there's no point killing you. I'll see you later. And he walks away and Kaladin just starts following him. And like they have a conversation that way because Kaladin just will not leave him alone. He can't do anything to him. But he asks questions about. You know, like, all right, you're a wind runner. I'm a wind runner. Let's see what you can do. And Seth's like, but you're not in my league, buddy. And yeah, like, but yeah, rather than a sit down, let's get to know each other conversation, it's a Kaladin following spitting abuses at Seth, while Seth's just like, can I go? Don't you walk away from me, you bald headed bastard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Although, like, the one specific prediction I had throughout all this was like, I wonder if Stormlight will heal a wound but done by a shard blade. 
because mm. I want I wonder if that would fix Kaladin right up. It's like that, that would be imagine nice. that they start having another fight and Seth's like 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 you've only got one hand and Kaladin's like do I and the stormlight infuses his hand and it comes back. Hmm. Okay. That could be. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I also I, I like what Dak pointed out. I mean we have the interlude that's called Zahel. It shouldn't be a shocker to Zahel may make an appearance. So. Dak, I want you specifically, and if anyone else wants to theorize that Zahel may be from elsewhere, look for clues, and I want to hear I want to hear theories next time on if he's from another planet, where is he from? Were there any clues in his interlude? Yeah. I'm still holding on to the hope. I don't know uh, if it will pan out, but like if he is from another planet, I hope he's just some Johnny come random who <laughs> just ha- who just like accidentally himself onto this planet, just made the most of it. Who's blood? Some guys. <laughs> he's he's some guy. It's it's all good. Came to this planet to cure his bonitis. <laughs> oh no, I forgot. <laughs> I was so busy being an 80s guy, I forgot to cure it. <laughs> My only regret same, same. is that I have bonitis. Yeah, I feel like we have to pick up really where Seth and Kaladin have, have jumped out the window. I don't know that we've ever seen Seth fail to get his hmm. target. I don't think we have. Um, That's so a good point. That could be interesting i'm not expecting a massive amount more to occur i think i think we're going to be kind of on the 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 cool down after our action chapter towards the end of the part whether seth manages just to get away i don't know how high up they are like if they go out that window are they just kind of a story down or are they a lot further down like how far did they actually get getting out i don't i don't know because they could just, like, both land, depending on how much stormlight they've got. They could be quite injured. But I think Seth is going to get away, and the, the element of surprise is gone. So he will – I think he will come back, but there is no point continuing now. They will be able to call for more reinforcements and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and clearly they've got more experienced people than Seth was sort of a- accounting for. So, yeah, that, that – I, I yeah, it's nice. I'd love to sit down between the two of them and go, man, dude, like, what, what, what gives? Why are you doing this to us? You know, I just don't, I don't think we're gonna get that. But I also don't see the fight really continuing between Seth and Kaladin. Kaladin's not the target, so yeah, we'll see what happens there. Blossoms, blossoms, and cake. I actually thought it could be a Shalan flashback. We haven't had one in a little while. I don't know if we'd end a part on a flashback, but there could be something there. You know, we've got Tin obviously making a lot of assumptions about Shalan's life. And obviously we know she's had a lot more of a hard time than what Tin believes she's had. And in terms of being broken, we definitely saw a broken Shalan uh, a long time ago. So yep. I don't quite know how like, the words are going to fit into, like, because we seem to get the title in the story. We've, we've kind of already had that Blossoms and Cake line. But if there was a, if I could see a Shalan flashback here that, that may be relevant possibly and then the interludes um you know not really sure what's going to happen obviously we've got name titles and things we'll keep an eye uh, out for those guys as you said but the it would make sense to have a navani chapter and i think that that multiplied strain of simultaneous infusion you go okay well she's got she's dealing with if navani would be dealing with the fact that the assassin who killed her husband is back yeah she thinks possibly trying to take her son but not actually trying to take her son, now trying to take the man who she loves, and Shalan rocks up with news that Yasna's dead. Like, that's that's a lot for this poor woman to have to bear, so to have sort of a perspective of her dealing with all of that in one go, I think would be sad but interesting to read. I can see that. It is a lot for her to have to deal with, right? Like That's a huge I, amount to deal with. I, one question, actually, that that makes that brings to my mind is – does Dalinar tell Navani or Elokar, for that matter, that what the assassin said, that the assassin is here for me and not him? I mean, maybe, but maybe not. I mean, they they may agree not to tell. I mean, do you want Elokar thinking that he was the target? Is that going to make mm. him any better? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he already believes that people are out to get him, which, I mean, he's not he's not wrong. Yeah, somebody's you know, trying to kill him. At some point, yeah. someone is, is, is going to, with, with the mercy of his own hand, uh, eventually do it. So, you know, you know, to still have that healthy kind of, yeah, uh, we, we, I am the king. I have to be aware of assassination attempts. 
like there, there's a certain level of that you need to have. But yeah, maybe they don't share all of the details. Maybe they do. I mean, they've all seen, they have all seen Seth show up and they know who he is. So, mm-hmm. you know, he's obviously there for someone. And I think it doesn't matter who that's going to be at this point. I feel like Dal and I would be the type that would probably still confide in Navani because, I mean, either way, it's not good, right? He's either here for her son or her lover. Yeah. Yep. It's it's bad either way you cut it, but, you know, maybe uh, appealing to that, the, the kindness for the mother's love and go, you know, your son's okay. At the moment, your son's okay. He's not here for him. Doesn't mean he wouldn't take the opportunity, I imagine, but, yeah, if, as long as you keep Elokar kind of out of his way, Seth is not really targeting him, and Seth doesn't like to kill but he will he will do that to get to his target. It's why I can't see him still continuing to fight Kaladin when it's not actually going to lead to him getting Dalinar right now. Mm. Yeah, I, I can't see him going out of his way to kill Elokar. So, yeah, it, since that's not his order. So, yeah, it's a good point. You also had an interesting point that's like Seth maybe ran up against more than he bargained for in this fight. But, I mean, he's taken on... We saw him when he killed the King of Yaakov Ed. There were, like, at least two guys in full shard plate with shard blades that he took on. And in addition to a bunch of guys with, like, the the shields that could block a shard blade and stuff. Like he's taken on – here he took on three guys, only one of them with any kind of shard, and that was the blade that Adolin had. So he probably wasn't expecting that much of a fight. And I don't know that Adolin or Dalinar really gave him that much of a fight. Dalinar maybe a little more than Adolin. Adolin went to the ceiling and then fell to the ground. And I think he was out. Dalinar yeah. caught the sword for a second, at least. That was something. But I think the way that they sort of work together, even though they haven't really had an opportunity to do that, that three on one, it mm. wasn't just like scrambling. They they definitely had a tactic to it. Yeah, Seth has definitely faced a lot more before, but maybe maybe the fact that they weren't wearing shard plates and things like that, maybe he's underestimated them slightly. Um, Kaladin did have a small amount of Stormlight too so has he actually come across anyone else who has been able to use Stormlight are we sure Dalinar can't use a bit of Stormlight himself I mean catching that blade in his hands that's quite a move you know maybe there's maybe there's something else going on there and like that would kind of make sense if he had some sort of ability that he hadn't he didn't know about given that he's having these visions and you know Kaladin's clearly having visions Shalan can you use Stormlight also and is seeing things. It wouldn't shock me if, if Dalinar had that ability. That's an interesting thought. I, Dal, something weird is definitely happening to Dalinar, right? We've got that much. Is he, is he somehow connecting to a Spren the way Kaladin and Shalan are to allow him to get access to Stormlight? And if so, what kind of Spren is that? Or is it more like whatever the hell is happening with Seth where Syl's like, no, he definitely does not have a Spren? Yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, it sounds like that's not a good thing if he doesn't have a spren, right? So I would hope for Dalinar's sake that there was a spren somewhere there, but we haven't, we we didn't see it in Way of Kings. Mm. Maybe there is now, though. We haven't had a Dalinar perspective, and you know, no one else really sees Sill unless Sill wants them to. Sure. So you know, and, and I don't think it's something that you would volunteer. <laughs> There's this bit of information to like I, the only way we're going to find that out is through a Dalinar perspective, I would think. But maybe, maybe there's an opportunity for a conversation to open now between Kaladin and, and Dalinar because Dalinar is going to want to know how Kaladin knew what the hell just happened here. And maybe, maybe there'll be a further discussion on that that will prompt some things. Obviously, Kaladin knows now that Dalinar has visions. He didn't know that before. Mm. Um, and we already know that Dalinar wants to put together. I think it was Dalinar wanted to put back together the Knights Radiant. Yeah, he um, said that he was going to. However, somehow. Yeah, yeah and Kaladin was like, "Oop, this is kind of awkward." So maybe one of them has to take a leap and start that discussion off somehow. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. That, that it's it's maybe maybe this could be a prompt for that. I, that's how that discussion starts is an interesting question. But I'm just. Dr- how interesting would it be if, like, we don't have a Dalinar perspective in part three? We get to part four, we have a Dalinar perspective, and he's like, yeah, so I've been hanging out with this friend lately. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's It's been, like, days or weeks or whatever since we last saw in his head, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I have his friend now. That'd by the way, crazy. he's my friend. <laughs> it would so be wild. Cuts to his perspective, and he's like, I've really got to ask Kaladin about that weird spirit lady that hangs over his head. <laughs> <laughs> 
it just it's hard to slip into conversation, you know? The horny to do bows to it. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> just just try it out, see how they react, yeah. Okay, well some thoughts. Some very interesting possibilities Jamie brings up. I'm 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 excited for us to move on and see what happens next. We have, we have, we have things to do. We have some emails that I will read. Let me see if we've had any patrons. emails. I don't free free free. No, we haven't had any new patrons since last time, so we don't need to get into that. We have emails and no new reviews either. So we'll read a couple emails. We're running a bit long today, so I may not read them, all the emails that we got, but you can save some for next time. Uh, this one's short, but uh, actually, no, never mind. This one, among other things, ask us what we thought of Deadpool and Wolverine, and Joe hasn't seen that yet. So we'll come back to that when uh, Joe has seen that. Uh, yep, <laughs> haven't seen it. So our first one is from Julia. It says, new Sanderlanch fan. Will I ever catch up? Hi, greetings from Germany. I found your podcast a few months ago, and you accompanied my reread of the first Mistborn trilogy. It was great to hear all your thoughts and theories. Although it was my second reread, I still find new clues, and three of you found them the first time. It was a lot of fun, especially Data's reactions when the other three found gold. I will probably follow your journey through the Cosmere for my planned reread, and hope it helps me get through White Sand, which is the only Cosmere book slash series I have not read yet. I do wonder if I ever catch up. I'm, I was listening to episodes from 2021, although I might change your reading order as I plan to reread Stormlight Archive in preparation for Wind and Truth this year. However, I do not think you will catch up before December 2024, and I do not think that I have time for the four books and your extensive podcast, but I will find out. Yeah, we're definitely not getting there uh, by December 2024. No worries. You're, you're not going to. Don't wait for us is the message there. Um, uh, may, maybe email back. Just go uh, beware of spoilers in the Stormlight stuff if you hadn't read Lost Metal yet. Just ooh, FYI. Good point. Well, she, she said that she's read everything except White Sand at this point. Oh, OK. Weird. Yeah. OK, we're fine. Uh, well, there might be White Sand spoilers and anything post White Sand. So that's true, too. Yeah. OK. Uh, it continues. You might have already talked about this, but I'm interested in what is each of your favorite Sanderson book? I cannot fully decide between The Final Empire, my first book. Tress and the Way of Kings. My favorite non-Cosmere is the Rhythm is the Rhythmatist, and as data, I am still hoping for a sequel. Have fun with Words of Radiance. Best regards from Julia. Uh, so it's actually I'd kind of forgotten that because we got that email a bit ago. I'd kind of forgotten. I asked them recently what their favorite one was that we've read so far, and I forgot that she also asked that. So I guess go ahead and answer Julia's. Yeah, so that's a tough question. I guess if you're asking my favorite book from a from like the potential in powers and location setting, I would say maybe warbreaker or the stormlight books so like word of radiance or or way of kings i mean we don't know much about the powers yet so i mean mm. i can't answer that completely but i just like from a powers and location setting i would say i like both of those settings and powers but my overall fave that we would that we've read so far would have to be lost metal fair good one yeah i think i'm still on alloy of law it was fun it was tight it had a lot of the things that i you know really enjoyed i think the like all the action was really well written i really liked the characters in that book so yeah i'll, I'll, I'll stick with that i'm glad dak is kind of with me on that one because i have so often seen people say that like alloy of law is one of the weakest books especially in that second era of mistborn that is just like by far the weakest of that of the of Mistborn Era 2, and it's really not one of brandon's best works and i've seen so many people talk about it i'm like i really like alloy of law i mean it's like a little bite-sized thing almost that is much shorter than some of his other ones, but I enjoy it. It's a fun story just by itself. Yeah, well, I think probably looking back on them, probably Fans of Morning and Lost Metal, they might be better written possibly, but in, but in terms of just pure, pure enjoyment, I enjoyed Alloy of Law the most. Yeah, that's probably how I'm coming at it too. That's a fair point. Yeah. This is always a really tough question, and I feel like every time I answer it, I've changed my mind, <laughs> which makes me think it's 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 not really the best answer I could give. I think like Warbreaker was shaping up to be a favorite book, and then the way it ended just really was disappointing. So unfortunately, we have to like write that one off. But I still go back into like the first like the first Mistborn trilogy. I like seeing how stories wrap up. So the third book was pretty good. The first book, Final Empire, was really my first introduction, obviously to Sanderson, but to this genre itself. And I think that will always have a bit of a special place for me. But they're all good. Like, I've enjoyed all of them, except the political stuff. Usually book two in the trilogies are not so great for me. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's all the, all, all the politicking. Yeah, it's kind of a non-answer. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I get that. It's, uh, 
I like the way you put that because the final empire was also my introduction to Brandon and uh, that universe. I think that it holds a special place for me as well. And that's, that's probably how I would answer that is uh, the final empire just sticks out for me. And uh, I usually come back to it as my favorite, but uh, yeah, I get it. And by way of seeing how stories wrap up to lost metal was mm-hmm. also a really good wrap up to another series. So animated Steris was amazing. She just got more and more amazing as those books went on. So that's that's probably my one thing about Alloy of Law is that Steris definitely doesn't play as well in that book. And as we continue, you're just like, oh, I'm starting to really love Steris. And you don't necessarily get that in the first one. So that's the one thing about yeah. that. One. I'm like, I, I can see true. why you'd like the rest of them better for that reason. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's do one more. We, we have like four, but I'll save a couple for next time. This one is from Christopher. And Christopher says, hello there. I've been following your reread of The Way of Kings in Stormlight Archive. Finished episode 186 as I typed this. And I have really enjoyed your discussion of the series. Keep up the amazing work. After 186 and data noting the planned number of episodes for future books, I'm curious if you will also discuss Edge Dancer and Dawn Shard, the novellas, as well. Colo, Crabs Ahoy, regards, Christopher. Uh, the answer to your question is yes. We, I definitely have the, the Stormlight novellas in the plan for uh, how we will read this. And yeah, I don't think we need to say more than that. That, that is the answer. Uh, yeah, we'll save the other two. We're going long today. Yeah, that's it for this week. If you'd like to send us an email, like those folks did, the address is thesanderlanch at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram and X and Patreon, where I'm posting my verse read through of Dragonsteel Prime, but also I'm doing, after, after I did a poll on the Patreon, I've decided to do the preview chapters of Wind and Truth and record myself reading those. It looks like he's doing two chapters a week, and so I'm waiting two weeks and doing four chapters at a time of those so i've already recorded myself doing they did he did a prelude and a prologue in the first week and then chapters one and two so i've already read those and recorded that the prologue actually he released a couple of years ago uh he read it or released it on his website or something public and uh so i'd read that a while back and it's largely the same for anyone out there who read that but hasn't read the preview chapters it's it's largely the same there's a couple of very interesting little tidbits added that weren't there originally but anyway so if you want to check out that stuff my reactions to these things as i'm reading them for the first time you can check out our patreon that's pretty cool also right now brandon has the kickstarter technically brotherwise games has the kickstarter going for what was supposed to be the stormlight archive tabletop role-playing game the like an hour before it went live on kickstarter they announced actually it is the cosmere tabletop role-playing game and while the stormlight archive roshar stuff is the first thing that's going to come out the year after that is mistborn stuff and then probably elantris will follow that and it'll all get incorporated and playable all together so it's uh it's going to be a very interesting uh, rpg when by the time it's done i think i have uh i'm not sure how much i want to invest in it but uh, I actually I'm in the the beta, the clo- it's a closed beta, but I signed up to to help beta test the Stormlight RPG. And so I've set up a game with some people from one of the discords I'm in for next week to try and determine, like, do I really do I want to invest in in all of the books and things for this? Or do I want to just get uh, a, a minimal number of these things? Because there's going to be world books for each of the worlds that'll be will double as art books like official art books so and in addition to that they'll have information like new information about the worlds that we may not already know so those books i'm definitely getting i'm gonna 100 percent get the roshar and skadriel world books just to have the art and the information that's in them but how many of the books about actually you know playing the game i want to get i don't know i don't know how everyone else feels uh, out there audience what you if you're backing that but it's been pretty interesting uh, looking through for me and I told these guys that they couldn't look at all because even just look when you, if you go to the Kickstarter page, there's pictures on it that would constitute spoilers for the Stormlight Archive. So I want you guys to avoid that. So like I said, we're doing seven chapters for next time. For those of you following along, we're going to go through all the interludes and right into the first chapter of part three. So that's if you have been reading with us. Seven chapters is code for shit goes down. <laughs> I mean, that would be more correct, probably, if uh, I mean, shit is, we're in the middle of shit going down. So probably shit will continue to go down. Yeah. But if if it weren't a bunch of interludes, it would feel more like, oh, man, shit's going down. Yeah. Uh, but seven chapters for next time. Music by Miracle of Sound and wasing to the time of next. Colo, P.S. Fasher.
Crabs Ahoy! You forgot your name Don't let your spirit fade away Amnesia You've been through such pain But you're grown stronger every day Amnesia Amnesia